Uh, as you know, uh, this is a ordinary uh, meeting of the National Executive Committee of, of SAFA, and uh, <clears throat> we had, uh, we've dealt with a number of matters, and we will be dealing with more matters uh, after uh, the lunch break. But the pertinent issues, of course, is one that, as you know, uh, in 1998, Seb, Seb Blatter proposed that the World Cup must be played every two years. That, of course, was opposed, uh, and it never saw the light of day. Seb Blatter then made the same proposal for a biannual World Cup again <coughs> in 2001. It did not uh, see the light of day. Then in 2018, the president of Comnebol, uh, Dominique, made the same proposal that we should consider playing the World Cup uh, every second year. And that also did not make any progress. In this year, early in this year, Saudi Arabia made a proposal that uh, FIFA must consider and do research on the feasibility of a World Cup every second year. Now, <clears throat> in May this year, the FIFA Congress approved the resolution uh, that basically agreed that there must be a feasibility study on the concept of a biannual World Cup. Arsene Benga was then appointed to do research uh, on this matter. And then uh, a woman called Jill Ellis, who was the coach of the United States team, and of course, you know, United States won the World Cup for women twice. Uh, she was asked to look at the Women's World Cup. Now, in, on Thursday this week, we had a, a FIFA Zoom conference, and, and this matter was then tabled, and Arsene Wenger made his proposal to the FIFA Congress. There were 206 members of FIFA present in this Congress. And uh, South Africa, of course, being part of CAF, CAF has already decided to support uh, the World Cup every second year. <clears throat> Today, the executive of, of SAFA discussed the matter and recognized, one, that the World Cup was started in 19... <clears throat> uh, in 19... Am I stuck now? Uh, the NEC recognized that the first World Cup in 2030 will be 100 years later. The first World Cup was in 1930 uh, in Uruguay. And so the question that they asked, 100 years later, what benefit did the World Cup bring to Africa and African countries, because we're part of CAF, we're part of Africa. And the first thing they said, in the period of the 100 years of the World Cup, there's only one African country that hosted the World Cup, and that is South Africa. And the prospect of another African country hosting the World Cup doesn't seem uh, very bright at this stage. Of course, there's a concept of co-hosting, and so Africa needs to examine that. The second thing is that in the 100 years of this World Cup, Africa never won the World Cup. No African team made it to the semifinal of the World Cup. No African team uh, over the last 100 years uh, has 
gone beyond the quarterfinals. The last quarterfinal for an African country was in the 2010 World Cup in South Africa. So the World Cup in its current form has not brought the progress in African football over the last hundred years. And so the question is, is there then a need to examine all aspects and make an analysis of everything that may have an impact uh, and will help African football uh, perform better in, uh, at the level of the World Cup? <clears throat> now, one of the things that uh, was proposed by Arsene Wenger is that the question of the international calendar. Now, you know how the international calendar works. The international calendar allocates dates for international matches of the national team and the rest of the dates are for the clubs. But it is disrupting both the club and the national team program, and you, you've seen that, that the players arrive two days, sometimes one day, sometimes on the day of the match. And no coach, a national team coach, can get the team ready to participate in World Cup qualifiers if he gets a player three days before a World Cup <coughs> qualification match. Uh, secondly, also, that the league plays, then stops, release the players to the national team, then the players come back and they must continue with the league. That also is not satisfactory. So what he's proposing is that <coughs> there must be an uninterrupted flow of the program and that only one month or two months must be taken out for national team matches, World Cup qualifiers, African Cup of Nations. For example, if in October the whole month is allocated to the national team, the national team will play all its matches during that window. And when <coughs> it's finished, they will go back to the clubs and the club will have an uninterrupted club program. And that will also deal with the question that uh, players must travel uh, forward and backwards. <clears throat> if you take a player like Lionel Messi, because he must fly up and down, he travels 324,000 kilometers to meet both his club and country commitment. And then you have a player like Harry Kane, who is in Europe, it travels 40,000 Ks because uh, all of the matches are there in close proximity. So it's a disadvantage for players who come from Africa, South America, and has got long distance to travel. And that <coughs> is not in the interest of both the club and the country. So the international calendar is one of the clear proposals from Arsene Wenger. The second thing is, of course, is saying that we should play the World Cup uh, every two years and not every four years. And indicate, for example, that if Ghana, who made it to the quarterfinals in 2010, <coughs> if there was another World Cup in 2012, Ghana would have probably been in the final if not win it because the squad will probably be intact. But because it's another two years later, you find that either Ghana doesn't qualify or there's a completely new squad because it's then an eight-year period between the two World Cups. I felt that from a development standpoint, uh, that gap is too big, and particularly for Africa, uh, we should uh, reduce uh, to a two-year World Cup and not a four-year World Cup. <coughs> uh, as I, uh, I indicated to you, as South African football, this matter was debated at length, and in the final analysis, the National Executive of South African football agreed to endorse uh, the World Cup every second year or the biannual FIFA World Cup for both men and women. Uh, and so that is our, our position, and we support it. <clears throat> the second thing that uh, was raised 
and that is in relation to the Women's World Cup. The Women's World Cup uh, is now in 2023 uh, in New Zealand, and the NEC has decided that the secretary, uh, the CEO must write to FIFA uh, and to indicate to FIFA that we have an interest of making a bid for the 2027 Women's World Cup. Uh, our team, Banyana, is now ranked number three on the African continent. Uh, they played in the Buhari Cup, defeated uh, the number one ranked team on the continent, Nigeria, uh, and we did not bring all our players from Europe. We only brought six players playing in Europe into Banyana. Uh, and therefore, uh, we think that by 2027, we should have a Banyana team that can go to the final stages of the World Cup. Uh, <clears throat> so the CEO was then right uh, to uh, FIFA to express our interest and also ask them that they must forward all of the requirements for the Women's World Cup uh, 2027 in South Africa. Uh, this matter, of course, uh, once we have all the information, We'll have to meet with SASCOC and we'll have to meet with the Minister of Sport and discuss these matters uh, with them uh, because we do need the support of the government as well as SASCOC before we can formalize our proposal uh, to FIFA. The other matter that was uh, in the media, of course, was the question of the Club World Cup. Now, the Club World Cup was awarded to uh, Japan, to Tokyo, and they then withdrew. Of course, you know, Japan hosted the Rugby World Cup, hosted the Olympics, and hosted the Paralympics, uh, and <clears throat> maybe there is uh, major event fatigue. Uh, be that as it may, they withdrew. And so FIFA was looking at a replacement organizing country. <coughs> now, the CEO did write to FIFA to express an interest. Uh, of course, I had a meeting with uh, President Infantino in Lagos. I also had a meeting with uh, the General Secretary of FIFA, both in South Africa and also in Lagos, Nigeria. And one of the things that has emerged uh, is one, that FIFA indicated that there cannot be a FIFA world event without spectators. Uh, it's just a no-no. So South Africa will have to address the question of getting fans back to the stadium. Uh, secondly, uh, the percentage of vaccinated people are still too low. They need 70% uh, people vaccinated uh, in the country. And then thirdly, what we have uh, seen lately is that uh, the UK government has placed South Africa on the red list, which has implications for people traveling to the country, uh, essentially that they cannot come uh, to South Africa. And <clears throat> Chelsea, of course, are the current champions of Europe, and therefore there will be a problem uh, to get Chelsea to the country, and more so the Chelsea fans to travel to South Africa. Uh, so we, the national executive recognized that these are serious uh, impediments and serious threat to any attempt on us to take it to the next uh, stage. And also, the tournament is in December, it's now October. It's a very short time, uh, and uh, we are going to brief the government fully. Uh, the prospect of South Africa Proceeding with the attempt uh, to bring the Club World Cup, I think is in serious jeopardy. Uh, we must just recognize that that is going to be very, very difficult, if not impossible, uh, given the short period and given the challenges that we that we are facing. So that is as far as uh, the three events are concerned. Of course, a lot of discussion arising out of the Club World Cup. Uh, has centered around the whole program of vaccination uh, and <clears throat> we have 
Mr. Pubi Governor Sami here and the CEO, and they can brief you on what the discussions have been. What are the steps that SAFA will take to address this question? One, the return of fans to the stadium. Two, um, even our own meetings. What are the protocols for anybody to come to a SAFA meeting or SAFA committee meeting? Uh, four, we also recognize that uh, it's important to bring the fans back because there's a whole economy around uh, that match and people in the stadium. One, the taxis transport the fans to and from uh, the game. And so if there are no fans, there's no business for the taxi industry. Uh, so we have to try and restore and revive the economy around football. Uh, there are people who sell their, their goods outside the stadium. Again, if there's no people in the stadium, there's no opportunity for them. And we recognize the hardship of these sectors of the football economy as a result of a ban on fans in the stadium. So we had looked at all of these things and took resolutions as to how to restore uh, both football, fans in the stadium, and the football environment. Uh, we will have a further meeting with the government on Monday, on Monday to take these discussions uh, further. But uh, Public Governor Sammy, you may know, is the uh, head of legal, and the CEO and the COO, they have been given the task to take forward the question of the Women's World Cup. Uh, they can talk to you about those matters. Thank you. The, the NEC has resolved uh, to support the government on the vaccination project, and we are in full support of uh, the campaign, the VUMA campaign, and uh, that will start, we had said we should not start by talking to supporters. We must start in-house. So our meetings will have protocols, players who are participating in the leagues, there are things which they need to follow, but we are going to respect the rights of individuals. But in respecting them, we must all, we, the NEC resolved to also be mindful of COVID, to say it is not going away, what do we do? And then uh, Mr. Govinda Sam will take us to those processes uh, of saying, what are we doing as the association, starting with our own meetings as the president had said, and leading to the playing fields, and of course extending to supporters. So Mr. Govinda Sam will take us through those resolutions. We, uh, we had a, a very important meeting uh, this morning, as the president indicated. And uh, around this issue of uh, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, and its devastation, not only in our country, but the world at large, um, we recognize the fact that uh, uh, we're going through very pa painful moments. So uh, this impact also is, is an impact on sport. Uh, particularly football, uh, one of the biggest sports in our country. And as the president has indicated, there are many programs worldwide, and Sarafka has been looked at as one of the focus areas um, of, of women's football, of the Club World Cup, and we're seen as, a, as, as the, uh, the, um, the United States of Africa in a sense. So having said that, we deliberated quite at length this morning on the issue of um, um, the vaccination drive. And we are quite certain that uh, the government, um, uh, government's program, program of um, the VUMA program starting this weekend is a good program. It's based on uh, scientific evidence. Uh, it's not based on uh, rumor and conjecture. And we will support that program as football. So the first resolution that we took is that we as leaders, the president, the executive committee, all the officials of the association at national level, the coach, uh, the national team coaches, the coaches of all the national teams, the referees involved, both at the high level of the PSL, um, will be, will, we're saying they must be vaccinated. Um, if, if you're not vaccinated, uh, first step is that um, you will not be involved in our programs. So for example, if you're gonna come to an executive meeting in the next uh, month and the president is not vaccinated, uh, unfortunately through the policy and the decision that we took this morning, uh, he will not be allowed into the meeting. 
uh, as an alternative, we are saying, uh, so as to not affect the rights of individuals, uh, you'll have to produce a COVID-19 negative uh, certificate. Um, it's going to be a, 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 a problem. Uh, so so it, we, we said, but we have to take the lead. So that's one of the first uh, resolutions. And we're saying this will cascade down to uh, all our members. Uh, we understand that the PSL has also taken the lead and it's also um, insisted on the vaccination program whereby its clubs and players will be vaccinated. So we're saying to our members, the regions, these uh, associate members as well, uh, that you, um, in terms of the policy decision taken this morning, uh, will have to be vaccinated. We also then indicated that the deadline for vaccinations will be the 30th of October 2021, because we have to give you some time to uh, deal with that. Uh, but after that deadline, we're saying we're serious about uh, helping not only football, but our community at large in making sure that we have a safe community. The, um, the other decision that we had taken uh, around this is that we will engage with the taxi industry, we'll engage with all our stakeholders, so as to ensure that in this um, uh, policy decision that we have taken on, around vaccinations, that its impact is felt all over and that we are driving this process uh, together as a community, together with government. Um, President, I'll leave it there in so far as the vaccinations are concerned. Thank you, President. Um, good afternoon, um, everyone. Um, so we had the FIFA Secretary General with um, um, the Chief Women's Football Officer um, from FIFA coming through to watch the um, CAF um, Women's Champions League qualifiers the Kosafa for the Kosafa region. They started by coming to Johannesburg where we welcomed them to Safa House. Um, they met some of our members in the Safa regions and I had the opportunity to present to the FIFA Secretary General on uh, our vision and how far we've come as far as women's football is concerned. Um, and also we, we had the opportunity to tell her how far Banyana Banyana has progressed as well with the assistance of Coach Desri Ellis. Uh, and, the, and the, 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 the achievements we've seen through the High Performance Center in, at the University of Pretoria. Um, and um, uh, following that, you know, the, 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 the FIFA SG also, um, the Chief Women's Football um, Officer, we're quite impressed with what we've done so far. Um, we did highlight certain areas that we still need to work on in order to take women's football to the next step. Um, and they, they, they assured us that they would um, look to support us as FIFA um, through various programs that they have at FIFA in order to assist us, you know, supporting us from their, from their side. And already those engagements um, have, have started. Um, we look to engage FIFA further in, in this month uh, as far as commercialization of women's football is concerned. Uh, we know that a lot of people complain about, you know, um, women not making a living out of playing football. So it's something that we'll look through and look at, you know, at the Hollywood bets, you know, how can we take that forward, you know, to in order to commercialize that more and professionalize it, take it where it is, uh, taking it forward. And also, how do we support our players as well? You know, the players that are in the women's national team, how do we support them so that we can get the best out of them, you know, um, in preparation uh, for the 2023, uh, the, well, uh, firstly, the 2022 um, CAF Women's AFCON um, in, in, in Morocco and um, also the quali uh, after, once we qualified also support us so that we can uh, put, f uh, put forward you know, a better for p performance at the 2023 um, World Cup in Australia and New Zealand um, to what we, 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 we put um, in, our, in, our tw in our first appearance in 2019 in France. So that is something that we will also engage FIFA or on with the, with together with Coach Desri Ellis and her technical team. Uh, we look forward to you know to, to to the engagements and also see how you know what lessons we can learn from that in order to to take our players and our our programs forward so that we can pro uh, produce or present a very competitive team come 2023. Uh, and another um, aspect that we'll look into is also the high performance center. We've seen um, the the successes of the high performance center. You know in all, in in terms of producing players for for under 20s and also banyana banyana as well. So, you know, it's something that, you know, um, we need to take forward, you know, put more resources into that and so that we can uh, bring more players through the program, you know, um, and, and the, the good thing about that program is the fact that 
you know it's not only the players focusing on football you know they're also focusing on their studies as well a lot of these players once they come out of the high performance center you know it, uh, the high school once they graduate at high school they go on and get opportunities at the various universities um, to study further you know um, post um, post metric um, and then also participate in the varsity football um, competitions some of them have gotten opportunities to go overseas and participate you know perform for top um, um, clubs you know the likes of Atletico Madrid we see Tembi Khatlani you know um, the, 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 um, the the you know the, the improvement in her performance you know when when you you watch the Aisha Buhari Cup you know how she's very confident how she's grown as a player because she plays in a very quality league you know uh, overseas you know so we want to also um, produce well well give players you know the opportunity to play overseas as well be seen obviously locally as well but like I said we need also to ensure that our local league as well is of top quality in the future so that the players don't necessarily have to go overseas you know we can also afford the players that are in South Africa the opportunity to have a quality standard um, you know, a, a football access to a quality football on a week in week, week out basis so that we can also you know look to produce better quality players for Banyana Banyana in the future so it's something that you know we are engaging FIFA on um, you know but, but Mamelodi Sundowns as, as well have they've, they've qualified for the CAF Women's uh, Champions League um, finals in Cairo uh, in, in November from the, th uh, th the 5th November so you know uh, sending them there as well it's another platform for our, uh, for, for our players you know to show showcase the talent that we have in South Africa you know Mamelodi Sundowns they've shown ladies they've shown the quality team that they're in you know playing in the Hollywood um, 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 league and also coming from the Sasso League as well, you know, graduating into the, the National Women's League. So we want more teams, we want to group more teams to get into that uh, level, you know, to get on that level of Mamelodi Sundown so that in the future, you know, we can also send more teams, you know, to, to compete on that, on that level as well. So, but uh, like I said, it's also about strengthening, you know, the football in the country, you know, ensuring that, you know, on a week in, week, uh, week out basis, you know, we provide our ladies with quality football that they've got access to, um, so that you know they can you can improve in their performances as well, for which will 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 reciprocate into the national teams as well. So, all, all in all, you know, the FIFA SG was really impressed with us, but where we we did indicate that we're not perfect, we did we do have um, room for improvements. They've shown a commitment and committed to assisting us in taking women's football, um, you know, further. And we we did allow them, you know, the opportunity to see. Um, some of the stadia that we have in the country, um, you know, the Cape Town Stadium, you know, in, in Durban as well, we, show, we showed them some of the, the stadia that we have. They did come, you know, to Johannesburg where we showed them the FNB Stadium as well so, so that they can see the kind of venues that we have, you know, uh, come 2027 when, you know, if everything goes well, you know, um, our bid um, uh, works out and we get the government's backing, you know, in order to host the, the, the first to uh, Women's Football World Cup in, in South Africa so that they can see that we've got the venues, we've got the stadium, we've got the infrastructure, you know, present to host such quality tournaments, you know, in, in the country. So it's, 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 that's, that's a summary for us. But we do have all it takes, you know, you know to host such, um, such quality tournaments. So um, it's just for us to put our hands up and say we are, you know, are ready for this, we are committed, we want to, to take the next step forward. I think just uh, the last thing which uh, we must talk about is uh, on the commercial space. We met with Hollywood Birds, as you know, that our relationship was for a year. We have in principle agreed on renewal, which uh, we'll talk more of the details. We have also in principle agreed with Sasol on renewal. We will invite you soon to talk about the details of Sasol renewal, but that has been agreed in principle. So that's the last things uh, I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Papa Ethiopia and the fans. Oh, the fans for so the next Ethiopia. We are meeting with the the minister, uh, the minister of health, on Monday to discuss exactly those details, because we do need the Department of Health to verify if a person claim he's been vaccinated they will ha be able to verify. And once the verification, verification process is complete, they'll get the ticket to go to the stadium. Uh, we want 
the fans back in the stadium. Uh, it's now 10 matches that Bafana played without the fans, and Bafana did not lose in any of those matches. Uh, so we want them back. Uh, and we did speak to some of the fans who were there at the launch with the minister, and they were very excited. They want to get back uh, into the stadium. But the detail we'll discuss with the minister on Monday, and we will then uh, have a press conference. We have a press conference after. Yes. We're having a press conference after to give the detail of where they collect the ticket, what is the process, uh, and that's on Monday.